Hi, I'm Julie Davis with Blick Art Materials. You know, tracing the history of patterns used in quilts is a fascinating journey. Each pattern is surrounded by stories and folklore as to who created them and why they were created, but some are just mysteries. One thing we do know for sure, quilt patterns are an art form. They take shapes and colors and arrange them to form a completed piece of art. Our project today merges quilt port patterns with another traditional art form, metal tooling. This is quilted foil, and it's a whole new experience in pattern, color, and texture. I would begin this project by researching quilt patterns with the students, and then having them design their own. I have a sketch prepared here on a piece of paper, ready to go. Now you'll notice from our examples, the finished pieces will be mounted in an embroidery hoop. So we need to design our sketches so that they fit on the embroidery hoop. This is a 10 inch embroidery hoop. If you trace around it and keep the pattern inside the di diameter, then we know that it'll fit. Next, we're going to need a piece of tooling foil. This is 38 gauge metal tooling foil. It comes on a roll and you can cut it off easily with a pair of scissors or a paper cutter. It can form some sharp edges, so just be very careful when handling the edges. It's gold on one side, silver on the other side, kind of a medium weight tooling foil. So decide which side you'd like to use and place it underneath your sketch. Next, we're going to transfer the sketch onto the tooling foil. You'll want to use a soft surface. Um, some people put magazines or newspapers underneath their design. I've got a couple pieces of craft foam underneath here. If you try and tool on a hard surface, the metal doesn't have anywhere to go, so you don't really get any embossing. If you use a soft surface, though, the metal will stretch down into the surface, and you'll get a lot more depth with it. I have with me today a number of tools from a company called 10 Second Studio. These tools are so much fun and they're designed purposefully for metal tooling. They have double ends, so you can transfer delicate lines with a pointed end like this. Now you could also use a ballpoint pen perhaps, or another tool to do a line like this. But let me just take this off so I can show a little more of what these tools can do for you. They have a rolling end to them. So if you run this in like that, you can create patterns like this dotted scalloped edge. Some of the tools create stitchery patterns, so we can truly get the look of a stitched embroidered piece. Some of them create a dot pattern just by rolling along. If you want to get a really straight line, you could hold a ruler against it and run a ruler next to it. There's even a wire brush tool, which creates a real brushed metal look if you use it in small circles like this. Use it on the gold side, it'll work its way down to the silver if you keep at it long enough. Another option I wanted to show you today for creating patterns in your metal is to use a rubbing plate. These sturdy little rubbing plates can be put underneath the metal. I kind of use my fingers at first so that I can see exactly where the pattern is taking place. Then I take a drawing stump like this and go around and gently work that pattern out. All right, well, now let's look at a completed piece, shall we? I have my design ready to go over here. You can see a number of different textures are used just to highlight certain areas of this design. Let's put it on the embroidery hoop. We're going to put the embroidery hoop underneath the design. Now to make sure that you've got it centered, you kind of need to press it a bit with your fingers around the edge and just look at it to make sure you have it where you want it to go. All right, that looks pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and press it down a little bit more. Then we're going to turn it over. 
on the embroidery hoop and go around the piece, bringing up the metal and at the same time pressing it against the embroidery hoop like this. Okay, now let's take the top of the embroidery hoop, loosen the top screw as much as you can without taking it off, and we're going to place this around the outside of the inner embroidery hoop. And then tighten it so that it stays put. As you tighten, check to make sure that the hoop is down within. Tighten again. All right, once you've got it tight enough, turn it over and bring your edges up like this. Now we're ready to add some color to it. I'm going to be using Palmer glass stain pots, paint pots today. A lot of you may know this as sun catcher paint. It's AP, non-toxic, but it is a permanent paint once it dries, so take care not to get it on your clothing. When the paint comes, it's in a little roll all joined together like this. The first thing I do is to snip those paint pots apart. If you keep it in line like that, when one pot tips over, they all tip over. So it's a little safer to use it this way. Let's start out using a Blick Scholastic Wonder White brush and just apply the paint directly onto the metal. You can get it nice and juicy and thick if you'd like, which I like to put down into these deeply recessed areas. You can also add a little bit of water and use the paint perhaps a little thinner. Not quite that thin. There we go. This will give you more of a painterly look to it. Other things that you could use to add color to metal tooling foil would be a permanent marker, such as a Blick permanent marker or a Sharpie marker. You could also use other acrylic paints. They will stick to the metal, but they will tend to be more opaque. The thing I love about these glass stains, as you can see, is the way that the metal glows through the paint. Okay, let's set this aside and take a look at the finished painting, shall we? If I hold it up like this and we look closely, you can see the texture of the piece, the embossing, and you can also see the way that that glass stain is glowing as a result of the metal behind it. The white is opaque, which I think adds a really nice contrast. This is ready to hang as is. It makes a great gift item. And that's our quilted foil. I hope you try making one because it's really so much fun to do. And it's very educational as well. If you're interested, there is a complete materials listing on our website a PDF that gives you step-by-step -step instructions on how to do this project, a few photographs to look at as well. And if you're a teacher, you'll be interested to take a look at the national standards for the visual arts education that are listed with this project as well. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you later.